I've gotten tons of comments telling me to try out the Windows Community MVVM Toolkit, so let's talk about it. Now suppose you're building a .NET MVVM project, doesn't matter if it's a MAUI application or a WPF application, you're just trying to build your dream app to solve some kind of problem. But one of the first things we need to do is add some MVVM essentials to our project. So you might create a base view model that implements inode if I property changed. You might create a base command that implements the I command interface. And maybe you spin up some navigation infrastructure so that you can easily switch between pages in your application. But the issue here is that this is all boilerplate and we need to write this boilerplate ourselves. And that takes time away from focusing on building our dream application, from solving the problems that we want to solve, and from writing out our domain logic. And sometimes we even have to write out this boilerplate across multiple projects. So you might spin up a new project later on and rewrite the same exact MVVM essentials that you wrote in your previous project. Now, imagine a world where we didn't have to write this boilerplate ourselves, and there was a standard solution where we could just bring the MVVM essentials into our project via a package. And that's where the Windows Community MVVM Toolkit comes in. It helps us with this boilerplate, it lays down the essentials so that we can focus on building our dream application. So how much does the Windows Community MVVM Toolkit really help us? Let's see what it has to offer. So for one, it offers an observable object that implements the iNotify property change interface. So the key here is that we don't need to implement our own base view model whenever we spin up a .NET MVVM project, we can inherit from observable object and use the standard on property changed method and notify our UI whenever our properties change. It also offers a relay command implementation and an async relay command implementation. So the way relay commands work is we can pass in a callback to the constructor of these commands. And whenever these commands get executed, it's simply going to execute whatever callback we passed in. The MVVM toolkit also offers a bunch of messaging infrastructure. So these messengers offer communication between components, such as between view models. And these messengers are where the observable recipients come into play. So instead of a view model inheriting from observable object, it can inherit from observable recipient. And observable recipient allows us to override some lifecycle methods, such as on activated and on deactivated. And most importantly, these lifecycle methods on the observable recipient are perfect for subscribing the messengers and cleaning up subscriptions. The MVVM toolkit exposes an observable validator that extends observable objects and provides an implementation for iNotify data error info. So it exposes a bunch of helpful methods for dealing with validation related to iNotify data error info. And most importantly, it allows us to use validation attributes on our properties. So instead of doing validation in massive setters, we can just use validation attributes and apply that validation declaratively. And finally, speaking of attributes, I almost forgot about this, but the MVVM toolkit provides some crazy helpful attributes. So for one, we can use the observable property attribute to turn any field into a property that raises property change. And this cuts down on a bunch of boilerplate. We no longer need snippets to write out all of this boilerplate for ourselves. We can just use an attribute. There's also a relay command attribute. So this attribute we can throw on top of any function and it'll turn that function into a relay command that we can bind to from our UI. This attribute is arguably even more exciting because we can just focus on writing out functions and building out our domain logic and not even have to worry about turning those into commands. We can just use the relay command attribute and have the command. So these are the exciting parts about the MVVM toolkit, but I do have some concerns. For one, I was concerned that the observable object didn't offer any lifecycle methods. So for one, I typically have my base view models inherit or implement iDisposable so that I can dispose of them when I'm done with them and clean up any event subscriptions that took place in the view model. On the contrary, I suppose I could just use the observable recipient instead and rely on the on deactivated method to do any cleanup in my view models. The other concern I had is I'm not particularly a fan of relay commands. I like to use class commands instead where I have a class that implements the I command interface and contains all of the command logic that I want to execute. The issue I have with relay commands is I feel like they end up bloating the view model, whereas with class commands, all of the logic related to the command is set aside in a different class. I feel like class commands are more reusable and it's easier to find the command logic just browsing through the file structure rather than having to dig into view models. However, the relay command attribute where you can turn any function into a relay command is really making me rethink this opinion here. If I am still worried about bloat with relay commands, 
I could just have a function in my view model that delegates to a service that executes the command logic and then mark that function with a relay command and I shouldn't have any bloat then. The next concern I had at first was with the messenger. So for some reason at first, I feel like the messenger was some kind of state management solution, but in reality, the messenger is just a piece that works with your state management solution. So whenever your state changes, you can leverage a messenger to push out state changes to view models that have subscribed. It's somewhat like a more fluent abstraction on top of .NET events. There's also a cool feature with messengers where subscribers can request data from the data source. I could see this being useful related to state management. So imagine you instantiate a view model, that view model could request data from the store via the messenger. The final concern I had was that there's no built-in navigation infrastructure or state management solution. And looking back, this is understandable because, hey, this is just a library to help us build MVVM projects. It's not a framework that's enforcing some kind of application infrastructure. Plus, .NET MAUI already has navigation built in, which I'm super excited about, by the way. So overall, I would recommend trying out the Windows Community MVVM Toolkit. Even if there are some parts that you don't like about the toolkit, keep in mind you don't have to use everything, you can just choose what you need to help you build your application. That said, I'd still recommend understanding MVVM essentials, such as the iNotify property change to interface, so that you understand what's going on under the hood of the library. And if you ever need to spin up your own custom infrastructure, you'll understand how to do that. But overall, give the Windows Community MVVM Toolkit a try on your next .NET MVVM application, so that you no longer have to write your own MVVM boilerplate, and you can focus on building your dream application.